If you guys have been following my channel recently, you guys know that I just switched over from my trusty Logitech G29 that I've been using for over two years now to a brand new set of Fanatec wheel and load cell pedals. Now, I wanted to make this quick video for you guys just to kind of give you an update and just kind of my little review of what I think from switching from a budget series wheel and pedals to a more higher and expensive wheel and pedals and just kind of give you guys the pros and cons and what I think about these wheels and in addition give you guys kind of an insight of what you guys should do if you guys are thinking about upgrading from a Logitech over to a Fantech and whether it's worth the money to do that or just uh, spending that money elsewhere whether it's uh, upgrading the PC buying new games or etc so I'm gonna jump into it right now hope you guys enjoy now when I talk about these two wheels I'm gonna actually show you guys some examples on three different games so the three games that I am gonna show you guys uh, some of the example of the G29 and the Fantech are going to be on Gran Turismo Sport, which is a game that I play a lot, uh, Acero Corsa Competizione, and iRacing. So I just kind of want to give you guys a feedback on all three of those games because to be honest, this wheel uh, with the Fanatec actually perform really really different on all three of these games and uh, depending on which one you play the most there might actually be a reason on why you either would want to upgrade to Fanatec or just keep the G29 so I'm going to list to you guys the pros and cons and just if there's any difference on any of these three games so so let's jump right into that. So the first game we're going to talk about is GT Sport. Now, GT Sport is the game that I play most of the time. So this is kind of one that I have a lot more familiarity of uh, the G29 and the Fanatec. And uh, to be honest, if you guys are coming from the G29 to the Fanatec, you're not going to really feel the difference on this game uh, compared to Assetto Corsa and iRacing. So uh, you can actually be pretty competitive with the G29 on this game. Uh, I know I was able to stay with some of the top guys and uh, actually be uh, very competitive and as well as consistent on this game uh, compared to any of the other games. And uh, the only thing that I did come across that were issues with the G29 compared to the Fantech is that uh, the G29, the pedals do feel a little bit clunky I guess that's the best way you can explain it where you don't feel as precise as you would as if you had the uh, Fanatec pedals or even the load cell pedals and uh, you can actually find yourself gaining a little bit of time with the Fanatec just because of the uh, sensitivity of the pedals and how much of precision it is when you are trying to get onto the brakes and onto the throttle but other than that the steering really didn't feel that different I could just feel a tad bit more precise with the Fanatec but it wasn't really that big of an upgrade and uh, if you do use this to try to make yourself become faster i was only able to increase my lap times by about three tenths of a second maybe four tenths of a second on some tracks so it really wasn't that big of a of a um, speed increase so if you think about it and you actually do the calculations here you would actually be spending about a hundred dollars per tenth of a second that you're gaining so if that feels like something that you guys uh, would want to do and spend the money for that then be my guest and get the Fantech over the G29 but if you think you're gonna gain about one or two seconds on your speed it's not likely to happen unless if you're already uh, struggling on times um, as you are when you had the G29. So with my opinion on this, uh, I, like I said, I, it's it's a step up, but I don't think it is worth a $400 step up to go into the Fantech. So this is probably one game, if you guys are only doing GT Sport, that you might just want to consider just staying with the G29 and spending your $400 elsewhere. Now the second game that we're going to talk about is Acero Corsa Competizione and this is now when you start seeing the difference between the G29 and the Fanatec. When using the G29 around Acero Corsa Competizione, I always felt like I was lacking information on the steering wheel when it came to riding over some of the rumble strips, uh, some of the uh, curbing, some of uh, the cornering as well as the bumps on the racetrack and uh, the G29 on this game uh, it felt like very very clunky so 
Um, I never felt as precise as I did when I switched over to the Fanatec and it really costed me on time and not only that but kind of the lack of immersion. When I switched over to the Fanatec on this game I just felt 100% different uh, between that and the G29 just because of the precision I was able to have on some of these cornerings and as well as just feeling all the information that the car is giving to me whether it's giving me to, uh, whether the car is losing grip because it's getting too much oversteer or I am not turning the wheel enough where it's just getting a lot of understeer and I'm going off into the dirt so uh, that is really one big thing that I was able to tell the difference between the G29 and the Fanatec not only that the pedals are a lot more precise using the Fanatec on the Santa Cruz Competiciones so with the G29 the fact that the brake pedal is really not that precise you can only get it into like about six different ranges on uh, the game but it really really lacked on precision with the throttle and the brake which led to really difficult times when you were doing trail braking so when it came to trail braking on the g29 i would notice myself struggling with that because i would either put too much brake input or not enough to kind of push me in through the corners and allow myself to have stability and control uh, especially on the higher speed uh, corners so uh, that was one thing that really really felt different and not only that when i switched over to the fanatec i was able to see myself become a lot faster due to the fact that when i was able to trail break into some of these corners but uh, I was also able to just put in the right amount of throttle and braking, whether it was needed to be 30%, 40%, 50%, no matter what, I always knew where my throttle input was and where my braking input was with the Fanatec. So if you guys are playing on a set of course of competition mainly and uh, you guys want to have a better lap time and just a better experience, then I definitely recommend getting the Fanatec over the G29 on this game and you would actually see yourself becoming maybe one, two seconds faster than if you were using the G29 just based on my experience. Now the final game that I'm going to talk about is iRacing. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting because with iRacing it was kind of a mixed bag of between Fanatec and G29 and the price and the worth of what you're getting with this game. So uh, the thing that was really really interesting with this game is one the wheel between the G29 and the Fanatec, I really did not feel that much of a difference. Yes, with the Fanatec, I was able to be a lot more precise and again, feel uh, majority of the bumps and uh, the oversteer and the understeer, just like in the Santa Corsa Competizione. But I was also able to do the same thing with the G29. And uh, the fact that I race a lot on NASCAR on iRacing, I was actually able to uh, maintain a lot of the same lap times with the Fanatec and the G29. With the Fanatec, I was able to maybe increase my time just a tad bit and also be a little bit more consistent with my tire wear just because I was able to be a little bit more precise with the Fanatec, but uh, it wasn't that big of a difference if, uh, if you were just to use the G29. So that's how the wheel performed on this game. But the number one difference that I felt was a big, big factor between the G29 and the Fanatec was the pedals so uh the pedals on the g29 i felt were very very inconsistent with uh braking and acceleration so one of the things that i would always have issues with on the g29 especially running around with the bmw gte or even other cars like the porsche 911 um, or other road cars was that whenever i would input the brake it would never be the correct or uh, the same as uh, lap after lap. So one lap I would put in about 80% braking uh, input and force on some of the corners. And then on the next lap, I would just be completely off and accidentally overshooting the braking point uh, or not putting enough braking uh, input into it, which would lead to my car either spinning out going straight into the grass or just missing my breaking point completely. And uh, that was one thing that was very, very annoying with the G29. Then that was something I was actually able to fix with the pedals on the Fantech. I was able to be a lot more precise and not only that, be more consistent with the braking and the throttle input, which led to me not only being more consistent on the racetrack, but leading to less mistakes. And uh, that was one of the biggest factors I was able to uh, tell between the G29 and the Fantech. So if there was some way that you can Frankenstein, if you guys are on a tight budget, um, a G29 setup with the wheel only, but then buy the Fanatec 
pedals and just swap them out for the G29 pedals. That is what I would recommend on the iRacing platform. But if you guys have the extra $300 or $400 and you guys want to splurge a little bit more with the money, then I would recommend getting the Fanatec over the G29. But if you guys are just right in that middle cut line where you can afford a G29, but you can't afford the wheel for the Fanatec and the pedals, but you can afford the pedals, then I would get the pedals for Fanatec and get the G29 wheel and just kind of Frankenstein them together and use that for iRacing. So that was basically my experience with iRacing and these two wheels and pedals. So that was my in-depth breakdown of what I thought between the G29 and the Fanatec on all three of these games. Once again, just to summarize everything, with GT Sport, if you guys are on the G29, I don't recommend switching over to the Fanatec if you guys are trying to gain a lot of speed and become a lot more consistent. Um, the G29 does really, really well on that game. You get a lot of force feedback on that and you're able to kind of just feel all the rumble strips, all the... Uh, the bumps on the road and just be really really good with that wheel you can actually be pretty competitive keep up with the top times and uh switching over to the fanatec only saved you about three tenths four tenths of a second now uh when it came down to a set of course of competition this is where the differences really started to shine and you can actually become a lot faster and get a way better experience with the Fanatec compared to the G29. And uh, this is really one of those games where I'm, I'm assuming if you guys are going into a set of course of competition, you guys are racing competitively and you guys want the real feel of a real sim and the car. So uh, I'm assuming that you guys are gonna want to buy the Fanatec for that game just because you're gonna get that much more uh, immersion with the game and just that much more precision and also when it comes to the wheel and the pedals. And then for the final sim, which is iRacing, this is the one where it was really Really, really tricky and I just did not want to recommend you guys to just buy one or the other because if you guys can then I would definitely recommend just Frankensteining both of them together save yourself 200 bucks to either save it for uh, racetracks cars or just even an iRacing subscription because um, the fact that you can do really really well with the G29 wheel uh, is just a huge plus for the G29 but the only thing that did lack on was the pedals and the pedals on the Fanatec really did make a difference and actually did shine uh, when it came down to the comparisons between the G29 and the Fanatec. So uh, if you guys can Frankenstein the G29 wheel with the Fanatec pedals, that would be the ideal situation in my opinion. Uh, if you guys don't want to spend that extra $200, $300. But if you guys want to spend that extra $200, $300, then yeah, I do recommend getting the Fanatec for iRacing. But uh, this is the one where you can actually kind of just uh, save a little bit of money and use that extra money towards more content for the game and uh, save yourself you know, a couple hundred bucks for when you were racing on here. So that was kind of my review of what I thought between the G29 and the Fanatec. Let me know what you guys think down below, whether you guys agree or disagree with some of the points I made, or if you guys just feel completely different uh, from what I said on this video. That's what we're here for. That's what we talk about on this sim racing community. But once again, if you guys really enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out the channel when you guys do so. And if you guys want to follow me on the Twitters, Instagram, or even on Discord, you can find all those links in the description down below. And once again, since you guys made it all the way to the end of the video, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys did, hope to see you guys on the next one. Peace out.